For this fly, we're going to tie a variation on the Timborski slider. Use any size hook or any size uh, dumbbell eye if you want to use a heavier one for uh, to get down deeper and heavier current, um, which we're going to use here is a little bit heavier size eye. Um, this is a one-knot hook. You can obviously go smaller. You can go larger hook size if you want. This is a general overall size that I like. Um, various color combinations, obviously that's up to your imagination. I basically like this in the color we're going to tie, which will be a gray, uh, or actually it'll be a chinchilla bunny strip. Um, and then we're going to have a head, which is going to be, the belly will be a cream wool, and then the top will be a black sculpin wool. And the first step is we're going to apply the dumbbell eye. This is a little bit larger size than um, what would normally be used for this type of fly. Um, these particular eyes are just regular lead painted eyes. Um, this is a large size uh, yellow with a black pupil. And you can make these eyes yourself pretty easily with plain dumbbell eyes. Paint them whatever color you want. Put whatever color pupil you want on there. Pretty simple to do. Um, obviously a lot more convenient just to buy them already painted. So I'm going to put that dumbbell eye so it's on there nice and tight. Um, it won't, won't turn on me. I will also just kind of put just a drop of Zappagat on the threads. Because I do like to fish this fly at night and I like to fish it up against the rocks um, at the islands of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Um, so that just gives it a little bit added protection. Um, once I get that on, I'm going to bring my thread to the back of the hook and I'm going to stop pretty much where the hook uh, just begins to bend. Now I'm going to take my bunny strip, and this is a magnum cut. It's a little bit wider than the standard cut. Sometimes for the fly, this is a little bit too wide. So what I'll take is a, it do is take a razor blade and just slice a little slither off to get the thickness I want. The standard cut I find usually is too thin. A lot of times these are too thick, but I'd rather get the thicker one and cut it down. Um, and that way I'm covered under most all uh, scenarios. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from behind the eye of the hook to the point where the hook starts to bend, again pretty much where my thread is, and at that point I'm going to punch it through the eye of the hook at the center of the skin. So I just put that into the hook, try to center it, and then I just push it on. Okay, so now I'm going to temporarily remove the hook, push that all the way on, and then put the hook back into the vise. Now what that's going to do is I'm going to be able to tie that at this point on the thread so it's going to give, give a, a holding point to the hook. And then I'm going to pull this part of the hide out of the way, wrap my thread forward, and then I'm going to tie the front part down. So the easiest way for me to do this is I can just turn the hook over. Okay, then I'm going to pull the skin so that it's down onto the top of the hook. And I'm going to wet my fingers, and I'm basically where the thread is hanging, I'm going to clear all the hair out of that spot so that I end up having just the bare skin. So what I'm going to do is make a couple wraps right here to tie that down to the hook, but I don't want to tie any of the hair down. I just want to wrap that skin. So you notice I'm pulling it out of the way. Now I'm just making one, two, three, four wraps. Okay, now that's nice and tight. I'm going to pull this up out of the way and then I'm going to wrap the thread to right behind the dumbbell eye. Okay, then I'm going to pull the skin down and I'm going to do the same thing up in the front, right where that tie-in point is, right behind the dumbbell eye. I'm going to pull all that hair out of the way, pull the rest of that forward, and then I'm going to make, again, about three or four wraps around there nice and tight. Then I'm just going to take my scissor and I'm going to cut this little excess off here and I'm going to tie it down, wrap the end down. Okay, so now what I have is the rabbit. I don't care about how long this is right now. I actually still have the whole strip on there. I'll trim that down to the size I want it later. But notice that the hairs on top, if I flip it over, 
there's nothing on that bottom. It's all bare. So you go straight from the hook right into the skin with no hair on the bottom. Okay, now it's pretty simple. From this point, we're going to put the flash on the bottom. Then we're going to put the belly color of the ram's wool on. And then we're going to put the dark color of the ram's wool on, which will be the, uh, the black. So what I do is turn this over. And it's kind of the way I like to do this. I'll bring the thread to the eye of the hook. So I'm going forward to the eye of the hook. And I'm going to take my flashaboo. In this case, I like, I like this Mirage flash, which seems to have a little brighter texture. And you only need a couple strands. In this case, I'm just using about three strands of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over the thread at the center point and then fold it together around the thread. So now I basically have about six strands. And then I'm just going to tie it down on top of the hook. I'm going to jump behind the eye. And I'm only going to make a couple wraps because remember, your thread is only at right behind the hook and the rest of it is, is going to be the um, the rabbit. So when that's tied in, what I'm going to do is take my ram's wool, okay, and with this it's already attached, it's, it comes attached to the skin. It's kind of kinky. Um, when it comes in a pack it's usually all balled up and, and not real neat. So there's a couple things I generally like to do to try to straighten it out. One is to steam it and then take either a dog grooming brush or comb and at least the area where I'm going to cut or remove the hair is just kind of comb it or brush it so it's somewhat straight. Okay, and then when I cut it off the skin, you don't really need a lot of it, um, but you're just going to pull it together so you can try to get the tips to be somewhat together here and then when I cut it, I'm going to cut all the way down to the skin and then I remove it. Okay, so when I tie this in, I will have um, a tapered section here which will taper back into the rabbit and then this blunt section up in the front right here is going to be part of what forms the head. So I'm just going to snip the butt ends of this to even it up and then in this case I'm going to remove just a little bit of it like I said, I don't really want this to be real bulky and, and heavy. And then I'm going to have this go, in this case, here's where the hook bend is. And I'm going to go just a little bit beyond that. The, the overall length of this fly, um, I want to be about maybe four or five inches. Um, this is going to take up probably about three inches of that, that space, of that length. And then so I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to just right tight against the dumbbell eye. I'm going to make three wraps. Okay, and that'll hold that in place. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the top spot using the darker color, in this case the black. Like I said, a combination I like also is a red belly, which is what I just tied with a black top. I cut off about a thickness that I want and, and I tend to usually end up thinning it out even more. I take what I think I need and it always ends up being a little too much so I always thin it out. That's alright though. And then I'm going to neaten up the butt ends. All right. And I'm going to basically about the same length as I have the white. I'm going to put that on. And then keeping the white right in place, I'm going to make one. I'm going to pull down tight. Now notice my now you're looking at me on my left hand tire. So with my right hand, I am holding that together at the top so it doesn't roll around the hook. And I'm also trying not to trap the bottom and, and grab it to come around. But I want to get three good turns around both of those masses. Now I'm keeping this tight. I'm going to pull all that together and I'm going to make two turns right in the front. Okay, so that's kind of the first part of the head. Now the next part is I'm just going to take a little bit extra of both colors. And in this case, I cut it a little bit shorter and I have both ends cut. I don't have any tapered ends now. I don't want this to really taper. I'm going to trim 
the taper into the fly, but the real taper I want is back here into the into the rabbet. So now what I like to do is I like to cover this space in between the dumbbell eye. So I'm just going to set that right in between there. So I'm actually going to tie these on the dumbbell eye. And I take my thread and I'm going to go up and over between the dumbbell. Okay, and I pull tight and I go around the hook and then I cross again. So now I have a crisscross on the dumbbell eye holding that on. Okay, and I'm going to make one more turn up here just because I generally like at least three wraps on there. And then I make one in front of it. Okay, I turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of black. Okay, I'm going to lay that right in between the top of the dumbbell eye. And I'm going to go up and behind. And then I'm going to go up. And over. And the big thing again is just not, not pulling any of that hair down in between. So as you can see, the black is on top. The white is on the bottom. So I have two wraps. I'm going to pull all of that back. And then I'm going to form just a little bit of a build up there. And I'm going to whip finish my white. And then at this point, I'm going to take the thread off. Now, what I do here is I trim the head, and I st still notice I have that whole length of uh, rabbit on there. I'm going to cut that off in the next step, but right now what I want to do is I want to make this a little more manageable. So, the first one, the first hair that I tied in where I have the taper, okay, those I don't want to cut, so I'm going to kind of hold those out of the way for a second, and I'm going to come in here with my scissor, and I'm just going to kind of cut the hair to just kind of shape I want a little bit. I can make it a little bit flatter and straight for a mullet. I can make it a little bit more round and bulky for a, a bunker. Main thing I do is I make sure the eyes are clear. I make sure I have nothing blocking, covering the eyes. Now the length, like I said, um, I'm looking for about five inches or so. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to cut the rabbit strip so that now I have kind of a nice, you can see the taper in the fly. I have, have um, a kind of a natural bait fly. You can see a little bit of flash on the bottom there. What I'm going to do now Put a weed guard on. Two things. I switched to red thread. Okay, so in this case, I'm using Rio for the weed guard. Another good brand is Mason Hard Mono. What I'm doing is going to take it. I'm going to fold it right over the eye of the hook. With my thread behind it, I'm actually going to kind of wrap over it. And I'm going to start to wrap that mono down onto hook shank and as I go back I'm also pulling it straight up okay so now I'm gonna pull this forward and just lay my thumb down and what I'm gonna do is just build up a little thread base behind the mono so it'll stand straight up Okay, then I'm going to tie my thread off. We'll finish it. Cut it off. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take my 
monofilament, the weed guard, I'm going to push it down to the point of the hook and I'm going to cut this just a little bit above the point. And then that's it. Now, as you can see with the fly, the weed guard's attached. I have a nice little shape that I want for that little baby menhaden. And then with the, uh, the rabbit, it gives it that little taper coming back to the tail. So then you have a nice little shape for a bait fish.